Hi again, I'm Stephen Wessner, CEO of Predictive ROI. Let's dive into a topic about how you can get the most value out of being a host. Let's say that you are the host of your own podcast series, awesome. Let's say that you have a YouTube channel, great. Let's say that you have a rockin' awesome, super popular blog, or want to have a super popular blog, or let's say that you want to write a book, or let's say that you want to write a series of articles, maybe you want to become a contributor to Thrive Global or Forbes.com, whatever. All of that, or could, um, you could create that content super efficiently by being the host of those interviews, right? Actually interviewing another thought leader, complimentary thought leader, subject matter expert for the benefit of your audience. So let's say that you do that. Let's say that you set up a series of interviews that you are hosting, whether it's going to be a podcast episode or not where you're formally a host, or a YouTube series where you're formally a host, but you're going to be hosting those interviews. So how do you get the most value out of that? <clears throat> so let's say that you have a YouTube series or you want to start a YouTube series. And so you line up, as, let's say you line up a schedule of 10 of those interviews. So the very first thing that I would suggest is getting very strategic about who you decide to interview. So here's what I mean by that. You can go to our resources library on predictiveroi.com and you can download a brand new ebook that we just recently released or uploaded uh, within the last few weeks. And it's called How to Use the Trojan Horse of Sales. So you could map out your 10 dream prospects and maybe have a bigger list than that. But let's say you map out you know, 25 dream prospects as we often refer to your dream 25. And let's say you take those first 10 and you invite them to be guests on your brand new YouTube series. Awesome. So that's the first thing. How you can benefit from being a host is it gives you the opportunity to actually put the Trojan horse of sales strategy out in front of your business by using your content as the Trojan horse. Now, to be, sure, or to be clear here, the Trojan horse of sales strategy is not about inviting somebody to be a guest and then as soon as you're done hitting or you turn off the recording, then all of a sudden now it becomes a selling free for all. No, because that would feel schmutzy to anybody and then you'll quickly stop getting guests because word will get around that your video series is nothing more than a pitch fest and that doesn't feel awesome. The Trojan Horse of Sales strategy is all about developing the right relationships with the right prospects and then everything that you do downstream to take that relationship forward because you keep providing value to that prospect into that guest. Okay, so that's the first thing. The Trojan Horse of Sales strategy is an excellent way for you to make sure that you get the most out of being a host. Okay, so second thing, and, and I would encourage you to go back to a recent solo cast where I took nine examples or, or created and shared nine examples about how you can slice and dice your content uh, whether, no matter what channel or what cornerstone content you're creating, audio, video, written, d doesn't matter. There's nine very practical, tactical examples. So let, let's now assume that you've created and recorded those 10 video interviews. Now what? So and let's, and let's also assume that each one of those video interviews was 20 minutes. So I would suggest that you take the video of each of those, or each of those videos, excuse me, and upload those into rev.com, get high quality transcripts, and then either you or somebody on your team transform each of those 10 into blog posts. So now you've got 10 videos on YouTube that hopefully you're going to optimize for search, optimize for search within YouTube. And then within the description, you're gonna link back to your website. Then on your website, you're gonna take these 10 transcripts that you're gonna transform into blog posts, put those onto your website, embed the YouTube video within it, optimize that entire blog post, a series of blog posts for search. So now your organic traffic goes up and of course your YouTube videos, or excuse me, YouTube views go up as well. Now take those 10 uh, blog posts that you just published on your website, take each of them, let's say they're about 800 words. Let's take those 800 words, trim it down to 1300 characters. So 800 words becomes 1300 characters. Take that video, download it from YouTube, Download the actual uh, video file from YouTube. Now upload it into LinkedIn 
along with those 1300 characters as a long form LinkedIn post. So now that one video that you did, not only created a video for YouTube, but it gave you the core content that you needed for a rock and awesome blog post on your website that you embedded the video in. You optimized both for search, so now organic traffic is going up. Then you created a rock and awesome long form LinkedIn post, shared the video with your LinkedIn connections. So one interview created three pieces, created three awesome pieces. So now let's look at those 10 again. If you got super strategic before you recorded the 10, not only did those 10 fit your uh, Dream 25 strategy, which would be great, your Trojan horse, but could you get really strategic in mapping out 10 book chapters? So that you went into each one of those interviews, different topics in mind, you weren't shooting from the hip, you had a book outline in mind or on paper, and you found the 10 people that would not only match your Trojan horse of sales, but they would also match content wise for your book. So now you take those 10 transcripts and you transform those into 10 book chapters that you can either self publish, you can now present to uh, an agent, a literary agent, and in the hopes that he or she will sell that to a publisher. Okay, so now let's, let's take this even further. So now let's say that you've got those 10 blog posts on your website, awesome. You could take a paragraph, out, lift it right out of the blog post, and now that becomes the introduction or the welcome kind of two to three sentences that you could put at the top of your weekly e-newsletter. And then down below, you could promote either this week's video or next week's video. So now you've got all of this content or snippets that you could promote within a weekly e-newsletter. So those are just some quick ways that you can get very strategic, that if you're gonna sit down and do interviews, that's awesome. Get super intentional about your cornerstone content. You as a business owner need to be doing that. But how can you take these interviews and get really strategic so every single interview matters? It should matter. For the person that you're interviewing, their time is valuable and so is yours. We all have the same 86,400 seconds in a day. And so if you're going to sit down, you're going to ask somebody else to sit down, you owe it to yourself and to your guest to make sure that that content is as valuable as possible, not only to them and to your business, but it has to be very valuable to the audience. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, please leave me your comments, questions, concerns below. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, would sure love to have you. Please click subscribe, click the little bell next to that so that you get a notification every Thursday morning, typically every Thursday morning when we air a new video. Until next week, double down and onward with gusto.